In this video, I'm going to show you how to properly install an MCI motor. We'll start by threading our power connector onto the power port of the motion device. We'll then take our network connector and thread that into one of our network ports. If we have the optional STO feature, we will also attach that connector as well. Our next step is to attach the motor to our mechanism. In this example, we're using a coupling, so we'll thread the shaft of the motor into the coupling and then tighten it down. Next, we'll attach our four screws on the flange and connect that to the mechanism and make sure they're tightened down. And now our motor is properly installed. For starters, we need to make sure our device is powered on and connected directly to our PC. So since we have already checked that it is powered on and connected, now we're going to go ahead and we need to determine the IP address. So we're going to open up our AMCI Ethernet device scanner. And then we're going to unplug our uh, motion device and plug it back in. And this will cause it to ping the PC. And so now we'll see that the device's IP address shows up in our scan list here. We know it's 192.168.050. And this is the default IP address of all AMCI uh, integrated devices. So when it comes straight from the factory, you know you can use this address. If you don't know your address, then you can use this tool here. So now that we know our address, we can stop our capture and we can close out of this. And we can go into our web browser. Now in our web browser, we're gonna go and we're gonna search the IP address. that's going to do is that's going to open up the device's web server, built-in web server. But you'll notice that it's not working. So what we need to do now is we need to change our Ethernet adap adapter settings. So we're going to go change adapter options. We're going to go to our Ethernet. We're going to go on properties. And we're going to enter pro Internet Protocol version 4. And then we're going to type in our own IP address here. So we will go with dot uh, zero dot fifty seven. You want to make sure you're on the same subnet. So, and then for the def make sure you have a default gateway. That's very important. We're going to do one nine two one six eight zero dot fifty. Click OK. Click OK. And then we'll just close out of this. Now we can reload our web browser, and that will pull up the built-in web server on the motion device. So now what we want to do is go to network setup in the top. And here we can see the network settings, which is our IP address, gateway, and subnet mask, and the internet protocol or ethernet protocol we're using. Now here you can set whatever IP address you want and whatever protocol you want to use. For this example, we're going to stick with ethernet IP, and we're going to set our IP address to 51, just for an example. And then once you're all set, you can click right configuration. You'll see the orange blinking square here, right in the configuration. And you should get a pop-up that says you need to power cycle the unit. So you'll click OK. And then if you look at your motion device, you'll see there's red LEDs. You'll just unscrew that power connector. And once that's done, you screw it back in. And you'll see it light up again. Green LEDs. Now what we can do is we can search up that new IP address that we put in, and you'll see that our device's IP address has changed. So that's all you need to do for the Ethernet configuration. Next I'm going to talk you through how to set up a Studio 5000 project. So now that we've set up our Ethernet device and we've configured it for what protocol we want to use, we're going to go ahead and we're going to open up Studio 5000 and start a new project. So now what we need to do is you'll see a screen with a bunch of different controllers. You're going to select the controller you're using. So for this example, I have the 5069L306ER. You're going to give it a name. So we'll just do AMCI test video 1. Now we'll click next. You'll need to select the version of Studio 5000. So I'm using version 35, so I'll click 35. 
And if you want to input anything else in these parameters, you're more than welcome to. But we can just go ahead and click finish for now. And we will wait for the product to load up. So now that our product is open, there's a few things we have to do to get our AMCI device into Studio 5000. Depending on what device you're using, you'll need to go to our product page, or the product page for that device. Uh, for this example, we have the SMD23E2. And what we need to do is we need to find the EDS file and add on instructions. So in the download section, you'll find the add on instructions for Studio 5000 and you'll find two EDS files. You're going to want to download the SMD23E2 RS Logics 5000 V20 or higher EDS file. So just click that, download it, see it pop up here. We will click on it and you'll see that here's the EDS file. We can take this and move it somewhere where you can access it. So I'm just going to move it into my documents here and I'll close out of that. Now we'll go back to our Studio 5000 project and now what we need to do is we need to import that EDS and, and sort of register it. So we're going to go to our EDS setup wizard in the tools section or EDS hardware installation tool. We'll click on that and that will open up the, the wizard or the suite. Okay. You're going to get this pop-up, you're going to click Next. Register a device description file, you're going to click Next. You're going to browse for that file. And now you need to know where you left that file. So, I know I put it in my documents. I'm going to go scroll down, and I'm going to select the SMD23E2. We're going to open that. We're going to click Next. We're going to click Next again. See it here, there's the SMD. Click again click next again. So we're just clicking through all this and then we click finish. Okay. Now we should have the, the unit in Studio 5000. Now we can begin to configure our controller. So we'll go to our controller properties up here in the top. Click on that. You'll see your PLC name. I'm going to go ahead and change the IP mode to linear DLR. Uh, just for this example, we do our AMCI motion devices do have device level ring. Uh, we have a dual port built into the drive of the motor, so you take advantage of that. And we will click OK and OK. And that sets up our device as a linear topology. Now that we've configured our device for the linear topology, I'm going to go ahead and click on the A1 slash A2 Ethernet. Uh, you can also click on whatever Ethernet channel you need depending on what topology you're using. We're going to go to new module and it will pull up a list of all these different units and what we're going to do is we're going to go unclick the module type vendor filters we're going to unclick it so that all the selections will be unclicked and then we're going to click AMCI and you'll see the products that you have imported into Studio 5000 you're going to click on the unit you're using so we're using the SMD 23E2 we're going to click that and we're going to click create Give it a minute. Now you got to give your device a name. So we're just going to call this test motor. And we know the IP address already. So we're going to type that in. 68.0.51. Click OK. And you'll see the motor's there. So now that we've configured our device in Studio 5000, we're going to add in our add on instructions. So you're going to right-click on Add-on Instructions under the Assets section, and you're going to go to wherever you stored those AOIs you downloaded from the product page earlier. So I'm going to go to my Libraries, go to Documents, I'm going to click over to my AOIs, and you'll see in that zip file you unzipped all the add-on instructions we can do for the AMCI motor. So I will just pick a MAJ, which is a Motion Axis Jog and we'll click OK, perform the import, and you'll see that we have the add-on instruction now available. So now that we have our motor all set up, we're going to set up some instructions. What we're going to need to do first is go up to our 
toolbar here and we're going to find the CPS instruction. And then we're going to take that CPS instruction and we're going to type in the name of our motor. So whatever you named your motor, you can type it in here. Or what you can alternatively do, which the better option, is go to the drop down menu here and you're going to find the name of your motor. It should be pretty easy since there's not a lot. Uh, for this example, I have quite a few motors here, so I'm just going to pick one. We're going to go to SMD 23E2 underscore 130. And, uh, we're going to look for the I, the, the colon I. You're going to click on the drop down for that. And you're going to click status word zero. So whatever your motor name is, colon I dot status word zero. You're going to click that, and that's going to be your source for the CPS instruction. Now that we have status word zero, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go to the destination, we're going to click, right click on it, and we're going to make a new tag, and we're just going to call it stepper data. And that should be it. We're going to create that tag. And so for the length, we're going to click 10. We're just going to input 10 there. And that should be all you need to set up your first copy instruction. Now what we need to do is add in another rung add in another copy instruction or CPS instruction and what we're going to do is we're going to have the source, we're going to need a new tag so we're going to call this um, stepper data out because this will be your output data so we'll just call it stepper data out then we're going to go to destination we're going to open up the drop down again and we need to find the name of our motor and we're going to find the output tag, so we're going to look for colon O. So whatever motor you picked, I picked SMD 130. So now that I've found it, we're going to click on 130O. We're going to bring up, bring up that drop down again, and we're going to click command word zero. And that's what we want for our destination. So once again, it's going to be 10 for the length. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add in another rung. And we'll add a bit. We'll add the toggle one or the empty operand. And we'll just give it a name. So we'll do a new tag. We'll just call it BTN for button. Um, we'll call it button jog uh, one. We'll create that. Now what we're going to do is go back to our add ons here. And we'll look for whichever motion command we want to do. I'm going to look for the jog here. So we're going to look for MAJ. Let me add that in. Now we need to give this jog a name. So we're going to do a new tag. We'll call this test jog. Create that. Now we have a name for it. So now what we need to do is we need to add our data. So we're going to add in our stepper data for the input data. So make sure you name that axis input data, whatever it is your copy instruction has for the the top instruction has for the destination, you're going to type that in. For the output data, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to use the source here, stepper data out. So we're going to do stepper data out. Now what we can do is we can set the direction. Now, there's some helpful tips here. What I recommend doing is using variables or tags for these values instead of uh, hard coding them in. So you could type in 10,000 for the programmable speed, but what you also can do is import, you know, put a tag in here, and we'll call this test speed. So what this will allow us to do is change it on the fly. So if you're running your PLC, you can't actually access any of this data, but we can change tag values. So we can just type in 10,000 here. And then when we go to run our PLC later, we can change this while it's running. And we'll do the same for the direction. Now you can't change direction on the fly unless the motor's stopped. <clears throat> so if the motor's running, you're not just going to switch directions. Uh, but we'll give it a we'll give it a tag here, just for the sake of testing. And for the acceleration deceleration, I'm just going to give it the same tag. For simplicity. So, 
Now what we'll see is when we input these tag values, change it, we'll do counterclockwise just to input something there. So now we're seeing is that we have an, an argument must match parameter data type error. And what that's from is in here, we need to make sure that the data type is correct. So we need to go to AMCI up at the top here, and it's going to be AMCI motion axis input data. So we're going to click OK, we're going to click apply. Yep, that's OK. Click OK. And we'll do the same for the output data. Everything's got to match here, so we're going to scroll back up. Motion axis output data. OK. Click OK again. And now you'll see that all our errors are gone. The last step you need to do is download it to your controller. So now that we have our motion instructions and copy instructions all set up, we're going to go ahead and download this code to our PLC. So we're going to go up to Who Active here, the little three boxes, it looks like a network topology. We're going to click that, it's going to bring up the Who Active suite, and it's going to come up with all your Ethernet uh, ports. I'm going to close that for example here. And what you're going to do is go to whatever Ethernet port you're using, and you're going to look for your PLC. So we know that our PLC's IP address is 192.168.0.100, and it's 5069 PLC. So we're going to click that, and we're going to click download. And it's going to come up with this little pop-up here. You can go ahead and click download. It'll verify the controller, and verify some programs, and it will download to your PLC. And after that, everything should be good to go. And that's all you need to do to set up an AMCI motion device in Studio 5000.